today I'm talking about hormone weight gain. Your questions answered by a doc. So in case you don't know me, I'm Sophie. Welcome to my channel. It's a lifestyle channel where I give tips and information and inspiration on how to be healthier, happier, greener, and the whole nine yards. Now, very recently, I did a video entitled How to Beat Menopause Belly Fat. And it got a huge reaction with lots of really great comments and questions from you. Now, the first tip in that particular video, and I'm linking to it underneath this video, is get your hormones checked. Because when we're talking about weight gain in our midsection, it's very important, I know it's important from personal experience to have your hormones checked and to essentially balance your hormones. And that was the tip that got so many questions. Now, since I'm not a doctor, I can't answer, I'm not qualified to answer those questions. So I have bought your specific questions to the office of Dr. Rachel West, a functional medicine doctor who I absolutely love. Let's dive into it now. All right, so Dr. Rachel West, let me hit you with the first question. You're so sweet to, to answer these questions. So in terms of uh, weight gain, what around the midsection, um, what, are the, what is the primary hormonal imbalance that you would look for? So the most important thing to address in weight gain is your adrenals. And they do get more depleted as we go into menopause. Everybody knows about estrogen and progesterone being lower, but it's very important to address the adrenals, especially if you're you know, kind of a busy person that burns the candle on both ends, um, and especially if the weight gain is abdominal weight gain. Oh, that's so interesting. Now, we actually have done a whole video on um, adrenal imbalance. And so rather than sort of reinventing the wheel or repeating the whole thing here, I'm going to link to that video underneath this video. And there's every single tip, piece of information, testing information, everything you need to know about how to balance your adrenals from the wisdom of Dr. West. So, so check that one out. Now, um, Dr. West, next question is, what are the other hormonal imbalances that we need to look for in terms of when it really does relate to this annoying sort of midsection weight gain? Sure. So definitely estrogen. Um, estrogen is found in our fat. And so when our bodies naturally start to get lower in estrogen, the body will respond by holding on to more fat in order oh. to try to make more estrogen. Um, progesterone needs to be done along with the estrogen to balance it. And then melatonin isn't something that we often test, but it does go down naturally as we age, and that helps us sleep through the night. And not sleeping is also gonna cause a lot of weight gain. So those are important hormones to address in addition to the adrenals. Oh, that's so interesting. So I've never, never really put, made that connection that when we're low in estrogen, we're actually, our body will gain weight in order to produce more estro estrogen. Right. That's, that's so interesting. It's just amazing how all these things fit together. So the right. next question, what is the gold standard for testing? testing. Okay. So for testing, everybody asks me, can we get the blood done? And it's very easy for me to do because I'm a physician and I have a blood drying office in, right next door to my room. Um, and a lot of the hormones can be tested through regular insurance type labs. Um, estrogen, uh, progesterone. Estrogen is usually tested as estradiol. Um, pregnenolone is a great test to do that a lot of people don't do, but most people need that I find. Uh, DHEA-sulfate. I mean, in women and for men, uh, but I know this is for women, but women have a little testosterone in them. And testosterone is good for bone health and sex drive. And so testing testosterone in a woman is also important as well as potentially treating if it's something they're interested in. Um, cortisol levels are important. Um, I do them again in the blood when I'm here, but um, for ease, some patients can do uh, saliva tests at home, and then it gives you the gradation of different levels of cortisol throughout the day without having to run to a blood draw station. Um, I find certain hormones are not as accurate in the saliva, um, but so I do prefer just to get a basic blood draw. Once you're already on treatment, 
the gold standard becomes urine testing um, and it is preferred that you do a 24 hour or at least six to 12 hours and document what that timing is um, and these days they made it a little easier where you can just do a little dipstick in the urine it's it's, a, it's an improvement of the way it was a couple of years ago and that helps us monitor once you're already on treatment what our bodies look like because once you're processing the hormones stuff will come out in the urine so it's another way to look at the body and then most importantly is symptoms and how is the patient doing and do they have side effects because that's a really important you know we can look at numbers all day long but if somebody is acting in a certain way or having certain symptoms you have to listen to that no matter what the numbers show that's so interesting. So in a way, what I'm hearing you say, and this has been my experience with you, is that you don't want to necessarily rely just on one test. I mean, it's a very, testing is probably the most important thing. Right. And therefore, it's, you're better off in a way uh, seeing a doctor or, or asking right. for testing where you're doing blood, urine and saliva or a little sort of mixture of, of right. most. And then on the regular doctor side of things, not specifically about hormones, but you also want to make sure your doctor is following you to make sure that you're not developing side effects to the hormones. So I like to make sure that my blood is not too thick. I'll even run a fibrinogen level to make sure the blood is not too thick. Um, and a, a plain old CBC, which is a hemoglobin and a hematocrit. Um, and then for safety purposes, um, if you do see a really good doctor, they will look at genetics to see how your body breaks it down. Family history is very important because if there is high rates of hormonally based cancers in the family, you may not choose not to do it or choose to do a lower dose or a shorter amount of years. Um, there are certain things we can do to help certain pathways with the hormones breaking down that can help prevent cancer. And so, for instance, a certain gene that might help convert the estrogen into a more carcinogenic estrogen, we have herbs that can undo that. And so, depending on your genes, we may up the levels of those herbs. And then we look at this, the values and the ratios to determine if you need more herbs or you're good. So, right. Gosh, it's just, this is, this is, this, my friends, is, is what functional medicine is all about. And that's why I'm such a huge fan. Now, next question, bioidentical hormones, or what is it? BHRT, right. um, safe or not? Sure. That's a very tough question. Yeah, it is. Um, so yes, it's, it's an intervention. And so some women have the easiest menopause in the world and God bless them for that. And then I have some women that could turn into people that we probably don't want to have around and they stay that way for 20 years. <laughs> and so, um, and there's different reasons why that happens for different people. So, um, there is a risk. The estrogen does make the blood a little bit thicker, like we mentioned earlier. Um, but there's also a risk to not doing it because it can really affect people psychoemotionally. It can affect their ability to function in their marriage, in their career, um, emotionally function in the world. And so, um, I find, I find that life can be really challenging at the age that we typically go into menopause, especially now that a lot of us are having kids at older ages. Our parents are older, women are in the workforce. So just kind of sitting around in a tea party, having a hot flash is a little easier than the women of the world today who kind of need to maybe postpone their menopause for a year or two or make it a little less. So it, there is a risk, um, especially if you have a family history of hormone-related cancers. Um, and certainly, like I mentioned, that the blood does get thicker. Um, and some people just have genetics. So for instance, I run a lot of gene testing and some people, if you combine alcohol with the estrogen, you're more prone to breast cancer. So wow. if your other lifestyle habits are really, really healthy, you do lower the risk wow. overall. Some people don't have that gene. <laughs> so. Wow, it's so interesting. And you know, my takeaway from this, and again, it's a bigger subject, but if you ever get the opportunity to do gene testing, genetic testing. It's incredible. Which is what I've done with Dr. West. Um, it, it, is quite, it is quite fascinating. And, and the big takeaway for me, the big aha, is that there so isn't one size fits all for everything, not just talking about hormones, but even right. the supplements that you take and everything else, they're just isn't so whole nother subject maybe we'll do a video going into more depth on genetic testing because i think it's a fascinating topic but for now sticking to this topic so last question um hrt alternatives for those who do have um a, a, a family risk uh higher risk for for breast cancer or female um cancers um is there anything that that that, that we can take right so there are herbs that help, such as phytoestrogens, that help 
uh, lessen hot flashes. There are lifestyle habits that can lessen hot flashes. I had one patient that finally just puts a ice bag on her pelvis when she gets them and that works for her. Um, there is homeopathy and I'm a huge proponent of homeopathy, especially for some of these menopausal symptoms. Um, I highly recommend seeing a good classical homeopath, but you can also just play around on the internet looking yourself at some of the remedies and trying them to see if they work. They do sell a lot of them at typical grocery stores what or Amazon. What is the Amazon. one, Boiron? You mentioned one to me. So there's a French company named Boiron and they sell at Whole Foods here in the United States um, and they're these little blue bottles and they also sell one called Actiane, A-C-T-A-N-E and that is their menopausal hot flash formula. And then on the back they mention the specific remedies that they've put in there and if one of those symptoms that they actually describe on there is more like you, then you might want to even consider doing a higher dose of that particular homeopathic. It's a little cheap thing. Right. But, um, but just you can start out with that. But if that particular uh, remedy doesn't, the Actani doesn't work for you, don't give up yet. Then I'd recommend seeing a specialist because um, sometimes it takes more specific diagnosing for the homeopathy to work. Um, some of the herbs are fantastic as well. Um, and menopause is a process and it's supposedly some, some people on the more spiritual side of things think it's a release of a lot of stored emotions um, and kind of a detoxification into another phase of life. So even though it's difficult, there is a spiritual process in it for us. Um, and so kind of working with that can be helpful as well. Yeah, through meditation and, and uh, that's what I really encourage through all the different practices that I teach on my, on my uh, retreats. I do digital retreats and in-person retreats, but that's the deep work that we do. Finally, can you give one bonus tip that if there was a herb or an herb right. um, <laughs> that somebody can go to the health food store that is sure. safe and effective for mm. dealing with hot flashes and general symptoms of, of sure. menopause is that one sure so uh, black cohosh is the number one herb um, but I would recommend getting a kind of a mixed formula because sometimes the herbs work in synergy together um, so for instance this company Zymogen we have one that's called all females and it's for everybody premenopause postmenopause to prevent cancer and also address the hot flashes. And then once, if you do decide to do the hormones, I would put yourself on some DIM, D-I-M, I'm not gonna say the scientific word, um, with a little turmeric, uh, because that will uh, help prevent cancer along one of the pathways of uh, the way that estrogen breaks down. So DIM, in the old days people took I3C, but now uh, I3C turns into DIM. So a combination formula, but that would be protective if you're gonna get the hormones. Great. And because I know your head is spinning now and you've got your pen out and you're like, what, what, what is she writing? I will link to those supplements um, underneath this video. Dr. West, Thank as you. usual, you are absolutely you. fantastic. Thank you guys. And we're going to obviously have Dr. West back to talk to us about lots of other things. And so if you have any um, particular things that you would love, areas of your health and wellness that you would like Dr. West as one of the most brilliant fun functional doctors to uh, cover, let us know in the comments and we will get on it. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you all for listening. So that's that. I really hope you found that helpful. I certainly did. I always come away from Dr. West with so much great, detailed, nuanced information and of, often information that you won't get from your regular doctor. So leave me any more comments and questions. If you pepper in a few questions, I'm sure I can persuade Dr. West to come in and answer some of those in the comment thread. And I will see you next time. If you enjoy this video and don't want to miss any of my upcoming videos, please subscribe and make sure you click on the bell icon next door to the subscription box so you'll be notified as soon as a video goes live. Also, make sure you turn on the notifications for YouTube on your phone.